morning. My name's Tim Farrell. I'm here in Lafayette. This is H.A.R. Texas Cowboy. He is a three-year-old gilding. And I'm going to demonstrate some lead changes, how we work on the lead changes, the drills that we do to set horses up for lead changes, and I'm going to show you some turnaround stuff. So this is going to get a little on the lengthy side. If you cannot take your leg and move your horse like this, like this, and again, I'm not doing much of anything with my hand other than keeping him straight. If you cannot take and move his hip like this, or move your foot back and like this, you cannot do lead changes. You have to have total control of your horse's body all the time. The hip, the rib section, the front shoulder, head and neck, okay? A lead change is just that. It is a lead change. It's not a change of direction. I'm going to show you how I work on lead changes going straight down this arena as I'm doing circles around the arena. I don't always go across the middle of the pen, nor do I go diagonal across the pen and change my leads. I want my horse to change the lead anywhere in the pen I ask for him to. I've got another three-year-old gilding in there, out of the same sire as this horse, son of cowboy, three-year-old, deadly leaded. I could have brought him out here, showed you these, slick as a whistle, you just said, yep, he really can do it. This horse is more of a cutter, and we have not worked on lead changes probably since last year as a two-year-old. This morning, I was just warming him up and trying to move his hip at a lope, and he's jumping in the air. You're going to get to see him probably at his worst. That's what I want you to see. You can still ride through it. I'm not saying that Jack is going to do that, but you're going to upset him a little bit when you bring your leg and your spur into him and he thinks that you're asking for more speed and you take hold of him because you're not. What you're wanting to do is to move the hip inside of your circle, okay? So I'm gonna demonstrate some lead changes and then we're gonna go right in and I'm gonna demonstrate my drills that we do for the turnaround. These are drills that Jack knows that it was used on Jack to get him to turn around and need to be continued to be used. This colt doesn't turn around like a rainer because again, I work him on cattle a lot, but we do a lot of the same drills and I'll do them this morning with him and kind of demonstrate them, okay? Big thing though is you have to be able to move your horse's body at all times, okay? It's the same thing if you were gonna side pass over and open and close a gate and what have you. Same thing, and that horse knows how to do that, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lope off into some circles here, and then I'm gonna go down the pen and I'm just gonna try to move my horse's hip to the inside of my circle. She's gonna zoom in to try to show you that that's what I'm trying to do. Well, they, I want his head and neck continue to go straight down the pen. I want his hip to move towards the inside of that circle, okay? And you're gonna see that he's not gonna like it He's not going to like it coming down that side also, and I'm not going to let him just run off. I'm going to make sure he does it the way I want him to. So we'll just see how this goes. Then we'll come back, and I'll continue to talk, and we'll go through the turnaround. Okay, my horse seems to be relaxed and listening, so here we go. He 
He's not liking that side of the pen. We'll do that again. just a communication issue over there because as I'm bringing my leg in he's pushing against it rather than moving away from it and so what he's doing was going right to the rail with me all you can do is just keep going you, sooner or later you'll get your point across and pretty soon you'll start traveling straight down the pin they'll move that hip for you we're gonna do the same thing this way because we need the same control on this side that we got on this side <clears throat> hopefully it won't take quite long Pretty good. I'm thinking I'm going to change the lead going straight down this other side. Actually more down the middle here. a little bit. His mind's thinking. I'm moving him 
over with my right leg. I just asked for the lead change. Beautiful job. changes then we go off the other direction so that you do the lead change before you change direction I'm gonna come right at you and demonstrate that again I call that a dipsy doodle dipsy you move him doodle you change the lead and go off the other way so we're gonna dipsy and doodle notice that little change of direction He'll do the same thing at a low. He'll move and then he'll come back. Again, you saw him get all excited. Kind of got wound up and everything. Again, he's a year younger than Jack is. He has not had a lot of lead change training in the past six months or better probably. Again, if I'd come back out here tomorrow, probably wouldn't have any of that. He'd move that hip for me. We'd do those lead changes, okay? Just as slick as what he hit him here. If we had not done those drills, moving that hip around, getting control of the body, I'll guarantee you this colt would not have changed those leads, especially as sweet as he did, and hit him right on stride. You gotta do the drills, and you gotta get control of the body, or don't even worry about the lead change. Continue to just ride and use that. Move that hip. Move those ribs, that front end, both directions. Get control of that horse's body before you start trying to do lead changes. Now we're gonna go right into some turnaround drills. When you do your turnaround drills, what gives your horse some forward impulsion, some get up and go in the turnaround, is setting him up for him. Okay. So to do that, trot your circles, small circles like this. Tip the nose to the inside. Use your legs, kind of bump him, both legs, bump him into that. After you feel like you've got him, you've got this inside shoulder lifted up, you got forward motion. He's wanting to go a little bit. Now change your hands a little bit. Take hold of your outside rein against him and duck him to the inside over that front end. Get control of those shoulders. We call that a counter bend. See how he's counter bending? See how he's kind of stepping over himself in the front, even at a trot? You don't want him bent like this when you're turning him around, but this is how you get control of those shoulders so that you can turn him around. Doing this right here does not get control of the shoulder. It lifts the inside shoulder. <clears throat> okay, now we're gonna reverse and go the other way doing the same thing. And again, we don't do a lot of these drills on this colt because this is not how you turn around as a cutter. <clears throat> but he has had these done with him as a two-year-old. Again, I'm lifting that shoulder. I'm lifting that shoulder.
Now I'm going to counterbend him. They'll do this pretty readily because it's like cheating. You may need to bump with your outside leg a little bit also. Now a lot of times I'll stop and then I'll counter turn when I've counter bend one like that. Because they get kind of all balled up counter bending. So when I stop, instead of going that same direction and having to rechange their body, I'll just reverse them. Do that again, Tim. The counter bend into the turnaround. Okay. So we'll do it this, this time we'll go left to right. And do the counter bend and then to the turnaround. Got him counter bent, reaching across, reaching across. Now you'll notice where the nose is, it's to the Again, outside. Look at my hands. She yeah. should be zoomed in to show you. I'm using inside rain and outside rain, but a lot of outside rain to get that bend. Then I just take hold of that nose, bring him right on around like that, and walk him or trot him right on out of there. Kind of follow through in your turnaround. That's, that's your good performance horse falling down. Turning around is no different, or it's a little different, but it's just, again, you're dealing with an athlete. You're dealing with an athlete that's got to be warmed up. His muscles have to be warmed up so you don't get him hurt. And when you turn a horse around and you're working these drills, you've got to follow through. Like I say, once you spin, don't always just stop. Okay, because when a horse is doing this and he's spinning, when you say, whoa, everything throws against that outside leg that he's turning to. His weight, the saddle's weight, my weight is all going against that leg. Okay, so when I'm working on drills at home, when I'm spinning and coming around, once and I stop my turnaround like that, I'll just walk right on out or try that, either way. I don't let him just throw that weight on there and let everything just hit that thing like a shock absorber. <clears throat> That's so like a baseball player. When he throws a pitch, he doesn't throw to here and stop because if he does, this isn't going to last very long. He follows all the way through to take away some of that shock and, and toughness on that arm. Same thing on these guys. Follow through in those turnarounds, walk out of them. You don't have to worry about it when you go to show him. He's not going to spin and then walk out. Okay? He's going to be more than willing for you to say, whoa, and he'll stop and stand there. But it, it also doing it teaches the that. It's different than doing it here in the practice pen every day. And walking out also reminds them of that forward motion you're wanting. A horse that's backing in his turnaround is never going to pivot on that inside back foot. He most likely will be pivoting on the back one and backing up with the inside when it hits him. He also won't be stepping over in the front. He's going to be stepping under, which is going to limit his speed. You want him to stay forward and flat and step over like this and build speed. They push with the back outside foot. They pivot on the inside one. That's when they're forward and flat. Like I say, it's just the opposite with a cutter, and that's why this colt kind of backs into it. But again, hands, when you ask that turnaround, Bump him, let go. Bump him, let go. Bump him, let go. Bump him, let go. Okay? I'm not going to pull this horse around. I'm asking him to turn around, and then I'm getting out of his way and allowing him to turn around. Same if, way here. Bump, let go. If you pull, they will actually lean against that outside rein and slow them down. They have to get off the outside rein. Have I said anything that this colt's looking for a good home? He really is. He, he's, a, he's a really nice colt. Don't let all that jumping stuff that you saw earlier <laughs> deter you. He's not, he's not really that way. <laughs> I think mean, that was a five minute, actually about a two minute advertisement. Right in the middle of our, right in the middle of our schooling session. Somewhat subliminal. Now that right there, I'm not sure 
but I don't think I put a single spur into this colt. What I did was every time that I took hold and moved him, I kissed. And he gave me he gave me a little shot of energy. And then I kissed, and he gave me a little shot of energy, and I kissed. What I'm wanting to do is, and we did this as a two-year-old in this colt. <clears throat> when we would spur in the turnaround or what have you, we would kiss. I want him to understand that when I kiss, I want something. If he gives it, that's all. I mean, if he gives me a little extra, that's all he's going to get is that kiss. If he doesn't, I'm going to bump him, okay? In the turnarounds, in the turnarounds, you've got to be careful bumping with your spur because, again, you've got your horse bowed to the inside. He's stepping over himself, coming around. The last thing you want to do is drive the ribs into the turnaround which is gonna make him then get clumsy in the front end. His front feet will be out like this, trying to do this. <clears throat> what you'll do is bring your foot in, make contact with your spur or roll out. And if you need, you'll run it up his side just a little bit to get a little motion out of him, okay? Not necessarily driving the ribs into the turn. Now this cold, I'm not necessarily gonna demonstrate that because he's given me plenty for one and I haven't worked on these turnarounds in a long time. I don't want him to get hurt, okay? So, we're just going real nice and easy. Just like that, okay? So again, lead changes, get total control of your horse's body, work on those drills, walking, trotting, cantering. You can move that horse's body all over the place with your legs. You can. He will let you do that. Now, you may have to take hold of him, okay, in order to not get more speed because you're not asking for speed. But again, you can't automatically expect him to know that when you put a spur in, you don't want more speed. You have to help show him that, okay? Um, but again, body control. Working those turnaround drills, again, when you are trotting, keeping the shoulder up, Again, you always don't want your horse ducking to that inside with that shoulder, and that's what he'll do. When you counter bend, now that's a different deal, but that's what gives me this. And that's what gives me this. And that's what gives me this. Because right now, I'm keeping him perfectly straight, but I'm moving that front end. Straight across. Straight across. But that's because of that drill of counter bending him and moving that front end and teaching him that I've got control of that front end, not you. And then when I take hold of the nose, he just steps, steps, step, just like that, okay? Older horses, young horses, all need those drills done daily. Before you show, do drills to get him correct and get him thinking about the proper way to turn around, thinking about changing that lead. Don't do a ton of lead changes. If you know your horse will change the lead, trust him, do it in the show pen. If you do tons of lead changes at home or in the bank-up pen, you're gonna get your horse thinking every time you put a foot into him, time to change the lead. When all you might be doing is just moving him off the rail a little bit, okay? Don't get him so super sensitive that every time you bring a leg in, he thinks you're setting him up to do something. Get to, get to knowing how to change his lead with him and then leave it alone Practice it once or twice before you go to a show or in the makeup pen, and then do it in the show pen. Okay, you've got a nice horse. He's really broke. You're just going to have to learn the mechanics of how to ride him and get him to do his maneuver. What, what if I, he doesn't look his best, but we're back to a sale. Did I, and I think I did mention earlier that this colt's looking for a really good home. He likes higher elevations. <laughs> so... I'm not sure what else I can put on here. I hope this is somewhat helpful. Um, watch it numerous times. Believe me, you know, when we've got four, five, six colts in the barn, and as two-year-olds, we start working on these kinds of things, we kind of take it for granted because we do it a lot, constantly. We don't necessarily pay attention to how we're doing it. So sometimes, you know, we leave things off. But to the best of my knowledge, this is how I do it. and. I do it pretty much the same on all my colts. It seems to work good. It gets them solid in their lead change, gets them solid in their turnaround. Um, so I'm really not sure of anything else that I can put on here that will help you out. So, yeah, if you need to, you can always.
always give us a call. 765-477-0144. 765-404-6856 is my cell. And we'll help talk you through anything that we possibly can. For Tim and Miriam Farrell here at Hidden Acres Ranch, 